this is the intro. I don't know how to intro stuff, but hello. This this is going to be heavily edited. Hello! I get asked a lot what type of art supplies that I use to make my pictures. Pictures like, like a this one. So I'm making this video to show you what kind of art supplies that I use. This is not to say that these are the correct art supplies, or these are the only art supplies you should be using. Or if you use something different than this, then you are dumb. That's not what I'm saying at all. This is just the stuff that I like to use. So, without further ado, let's see what I used to make this picture. First off, the paper. I've been using mostly toned paper. I have white paper. I use it sometimes. I just think that the toned paper looks really nice. And the ones that I use, Strathmore toned paper. It comes in either tan or gray. Uh, you can also get it in sketchbook form, which I have a little sketchbook here that I have doodled some things inside. But as you can see, the nice thing about working on toned paper is that you can work, you can draw with white. So you go from, from medium to, to, to light instead of just light to dark. So you can get really cool, nice borders on stuff. Stuff really seems to pop out. I don't know. I like it. It's really cool. Um, I like I like buying these these ring pads for just loose artwork because they have a perforated edge on the inside so you can remove the pages from it. They come in a variety of sizes. This pad is 9 by 12. I also have an 18 by 24 pad. I'm not going to bring that out because it's too big for this video, but just take my word for it. I have an 18 inch by 24 inch pad and that's pretty cool. So we're going to move this out of the way. Now we're going to talk about the things I actually use to draw. For the underlying pencil sketch, because everything starts with a pencil sketch. I didn't just start immediately with the markers and the, all the other stuff. Pencil. I get this from jetpens.com. Jetpens is pretty awesome. I'll be talking about them again a little bit later. Um, but this, yeah, pretty basic mechanical pencil. I mean, I've also got one of these, just the office generic thing. I mean, it it holds lead. Just gets, you know, drawing stuff on the page. Just, just, just drawing stuff. <laughs> Derp. See? Just drawing stuff. Okay. See? There you go. Pretty basic pencil. Um, I, even when I'm doing pencil sketches, I will use this kind of pencil. I like it because I don't have to worry about sharpening the pencil. It always has a really nice fine point, which is awesome. And then if I'm doing any other kind of drawing, at the end of the day, the pencil line gets erased anyway, so it really doesn't matter. You don't have to have an expensive pencil. So I, I like this one because it's, it's got this nice and squishy part. So it's, it's nice. I like it. And then packs of pencil leads to fill this. I still have a pack of pencil leads from like... I don't know how many years ago I bought it, but I'm still working through the refills. As far as erasers, I have two different kinds. This one's just a pretty basic eraser. It You can extend it or not extend it. Uh, refills for this one are a little bit on the tricky side to get, but um, whenever I find them in a, like a, you know, a Staples or, you know, grocery store or whatever, I usually will buy two or three different packs of them, but that's fine. Um, now the other eraser I get for big, big duty erasing is uh, the Factus Black. You wouldn't think that a black eraser would be very good for erasing, but it's actually one of the best erasers that I found. It's pretty awesome. It does not have a lot of ghosting left on the paper. It doesn't tear your paper up. Um, you can buy them from any art supply store. Uh, I get my, D Dick Blick is my default art supply store of choice. So that is where I get mine and I will usually buy them uh, like a whole bunch of them at a time. Erasers, pretty cool. All right, on to pens. I have a lot of different pens. I try a whole bunch um, of pens over the years just to kind of see if there's any that, you know, I like better than others. But the two that I sort of keep going back to, first one, Faber-Castell pens. Mm. I pretty much just use them for uh, the uniform lines. They have a brush pen. I don't really like it that much because it, I, 
find it tends to fray and doesn't hold its point very well, but I really like their solid line pens. Their, uh, the S size pen is one that I thoroughly enjoy. I think it's a good size and I will usually buy two or three of them at a time when I am buying pens. Um, it's pretty good. It's a, it is Indian ink, so it is waterproof. It stands up to watercolor and Copic marker and all that stuff, which is very important if you are buying a pen that you want to color with, because there are definitely pens that do not do that. It's not, it, it's really frustrating when you buy a pen and you want to color with it with real media and then it just bleeds everywhere and then you're sad. Um, the other one, this is a pen I can, I buy from jetpens.com. It is the I uh, believe it's the Pilot Pocket Brush Pen. Um, you wouldn't know that by looking at it because it's got all this, I uh, uh, believe it's Japanese writing on it. It is a Japanese company, so I'm assuming it is. But this, this is my favorite brush pen. It's a felt tip brush pen. Um, it's got a little bit of a heavy, like a, it's got a bit of a hard, um, harder thing to it. Like it's not, you're, It's it doesn't feel like you're drawing with a, like a really soft brush, but it does give you really nice line variants to it. Um, I like them a lot because I'm a little bit on the heavy handed side. Um, so I don't like a brush pen that's too, um, that's too soft, but I, I enjoy it. The other the other nice thing about it is I have yet to have one of these things uh, fray on me because sometimes with brush pens like the tip will start to split or start to fray and you won't get a nice crisp point to them. But these hold pretty well. You can get a really nice thin line. You can get a heavy heavy line. Um, get nice swoopy swoopy bits, which you know is is important for me. So, um, yeah, link to that again down below, but I highly recommend these. They also have a fatter, soft brush, uh, and I, and th this is the harder one, which I prefer and I like very much. Um, last thing for pens is I've had people ask me about white pens. This is the, uh, Uniball Signo. It's a pretty fat white pen. Um, but it has a really nice, bold line. Uh, pretty nice and opaque. Because that's another thing with some white pens is, this one actually might be a little on the older side. It's starting to run out a little bit on this side. But, so, I'm sorry it's not really demonstrating as much as it, as it should. Yeah, this guy, this guy's starting to die. Oh no, but... Actually, get a pretty different one out so I can demonstrate it properly, and I will edit it. It's fine. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they're they're nice. They're nice white pens. Nice and bold. Nice and you know, it's a fat line. Um, Uniball also has. Uh, the Angelic line, which has a thinner one, which behaves pretty much the same way. It's got a similar ink quality to it. Um, both are, again, available on jet pens. I think you can also buy the fat one, these fat guys, at Dick Blake and possibly some other store. But yeah, Uniball Signo, uh, UM153 is the designator. But these guys are pretty good for white pens if, you, if you know, you're in the market for looking for a good white pen. Um, Highly recommended. Boop. Now for coloring. First off, Copic. I have a huge, well, what I think is a huge collection of Copic markers. Um, I kind of have them split between, this is the Copic Sketch and the uh, Copic Chow. They're basically the same marker. They've got the same tips. On one side, they've got the brush tip, which is the tip that I use for the majority of my coloring. It's got a nice soft tip. So you can get sort of the nice brush strokes with it. I like it because I can, as I'm coloring, I can get a little bit of a feathered sort of effect. Um, and then on the other side, 
is the chisel tip, which if you if you color with uh, Prismacolor markers, you'll be familiar with the prism with the chisel tip. You can get a fat line, you can get a thin line. So that's for more little consistent color. I don't use that as much. Uh, sometimes I'll use it for very large areas of color if I don't want to totally blow out my brush tip. Um, but there's that. And then the chow markers have the pretty much exact same chip. Ooh, this one might need a refill, actually. Um, which, on that note, these guys are refillable. The sketch holds a little bit more ink than the chow. Uh, the chow are cheaper. But if you buy, um, if you use these a lot, I would highly recommend buying um, bottle refill bottles. Um, they'll fill... Uh, the sketch probably refill about a dozen times or so. So considering these guys cost about five, six dollars a marker, and the refills are about eight, nine dollars, uh, give or take, depending on where you buy them, um, you're you definitely want to get the refills if you're going to be using these a lot. Um, the Chow is a limited color, more limited color range. You can't buy every single color that you can in a sketch in a Chow, but if you're able to buy them. The, the chow markers definitely do it because I think they're like on average a dollar or two cheaper than the sketch and like I said they're basically the same marker uh, just with a little bit less ink but if you get the refills then it really doesn't matter so that's what I use for the paper because they're transparent that's what I use to build the darker color so I go from medium tone to darker tone and then when I do the highlights that's when I bring out my Prisma color pencils so these guys I have a very large, I have no idea how many. I think this binder is supposed to hold like 120 pencils and it's completely filled. Plus I've got, I don't really use them. I have a blender, a colorless blender. I've got this guy that's an extender. You put the, the extender, you put a shorter colored pencil in and it it's really only, you don't need to use it for something like this, but if you've got a pencil that you've only got like a little nub left, that's nice. You can use the last little bits of it. And then this, it's it's a eraser and a pencil, so if you want to have really detailed erasing. I haven't really used it yet. I kind of just been, have been using my other two erasers. Um, I like these guys a lot. Um, this is also one of the pink erasers. I'm not really crazy about the pink eraser, but... Um, I don't know, I haven't really experimented with it, so I can't really speak to how well that works, but I've got them. And then the colored pencils, you probably, if you are working the way I am and you're working with, you know, the, the technique that I am, you probably don't need this many pencils. You can probably just kind of pick and choose. I, the ones that I use the most are the lighter colors. So, um, for instance, for coloring this picture, I pretty, I didn't really use any of these darker greens here. I pretty much just stuck to the chartreuse and the yellow chartreuse to get the color tones in here that I did. So um, if you are starting off a collection of colored pencils and you don't know which ones you want to buy, if you are going to be trying this layering technique with the markers and colored pencils, we really only need to stick with the lighter colors. So light pinks, light bread, you know, light greens, light blues, uh, tans. Um, that's pretty much, you know. So, and the last, actually there's one last thing on here. And this is a, this is a new pen, new type of pen that I've got. But you see her necklace is, you can kind of see it's got a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. That is a new thing. I didn't really classify it as one of my favorite supplies since it's a new thing that I've just gotten. But they, another, these are another thing that I got from Jet Pens. They are the Zig, um, I'm going to mispronounce this, f uh, Fude, Fude, f it's that. But they are made by Kure Take. They are excellent metallic brush pens. Yes metallic brush pens Ooh, they are super nice super pretty um there is an eight pack um there this lime green you can only get as part of a separate so there's nine colors in total but they're really nice they're really fun it's the first i've never seen metallic brush pens before i've only seen gel pens um but they're they're really nice and they do 
They have a nice opaque quality to them, so they will stand up to the darker colors pretty nicely. And they've got a really nice shininess to them. So there you have it. Uh, I definitely have a lot more stuff than this that I use. Uh, I've got some paint markers, I've got watercolors, I've got acrylic paints, I've got all kinds of other stuff. Um, but these are the supplies that I these that I would probably say are my favorites, the ones that I use the most often. Um, and I would definitely highly recommend it. I, I will try to include links to everything that I talked about, or at least all of the specific stuff uh, in, the, in the description for the video on YouTube um, if you are curious about acquiring any of, the, any of these. Um, but in general, uh, I w I've mentioned jetpens.com a lot. I'm not being paid by them. They are not contributing to this at all. But they are definitely a great resource for pens and pencils and, and, and inks and all kinds of stuff. They're, they're, um, they're, really, they're really good, so definitely check them out. And uh, so, but yeah, I think that's pretty much gonna do it. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything specific you wanna ask me about, if there's anything you want me to show you how to do, if you want me to sort of do a demonstration on how to do this type of coloring, I absolutely will do so. But uh, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see that. If you enjoyed this video, definitely, you know, pop me a like, share it. If you, you know, let me know. Uh, and if you guys end up liking this, I will try to do more videos like this. And um, let me know what you'd like to see so that I know I'm not making videos that are wasting your time. Because nobody likes to have their time wasted. Um, and as always, if you want to see more of my work... LizzieBean.com, good to the last derp, Lizzie-Bean.com. That link will also be in the description. So that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye 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 bye.